gentlemen, welcome. We are live. All right. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Travel Man Dan here. And while well, we're just getting sit... Hello, everybody. Travel Man Dan here. And we're just getting situated. And welcome. Happy New Year. I want to start off the show with a very, very happy New Year. And um, hope you guys have a lot of good things coming up to you this year. I hope you have an amazing decade. And well, without further ado, let's roll into the show and get started. All right, this is the live weekly beer and video review show with Travel Man Dan. If you've never seen this show before, let me tell you real quick what it's about. Basically, I go ahead and review two beers. I'm not a beer connoisseur. I'm not a beer like a uh, snobby guy. I just like beer. I like to drink it. I like to taste it. And I like the way it makes me feel. So, while I'm drinking those two beers, what I talk about is last week's video to get you hyped out if you haven't seen them, and preview next week's video to get you hyped up. Hey, Coach D, what's up, buddy? How we doing? Thank you for joining me. All right. First, all right. And, um, well, I have some uh, talking points throughout the show, and uh, I go through a little segment called uh, What Are You Reading? What Are You Watching? And I close out the show with the quote of the week. So thanks for joining me. Um, I'm doing great. I'm doing wonderful. I'm so excited that you joined me here. Um, this show is a lot of fun. I come on live every week, and just, well, that's what it's about. So if you like what I'm I'm doing and you haven't already you go ahead and hit that sub button right now subscribe to my channel uh, hit the notification bell so you know when the new videos come out shoot me a like leave me a comment let me know if you think that I should review a certain beer or where you think I should go and check out or where you think well food wise what I should go eat I've been saying uh, uh, oh that's awesome that is you're an OG man and that's exactly what I want to talk about one of my students just uh, chimed in and said that he has been a sub since 100, okay? And if uh, if you've watched my show before, you know I'm wearing this ridiculous top hat with 3,000 on the top. What does it mean? Man, what does it mean? Travel Man Dan has hit 3,000 subs. <sighs> the crowd goes wild. Oh, damn on you. All right. All right. Yes, that's right. Travel Man Dan is entering the new year at 3. <laughs> Um, three. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Tell everybody at school I say hi. I miss you guys, and I hope you guys have an awesome year. And uh, well, that's why I'm wearing this hat. And I want to say thank you to whoever sees this video, whenever you see it. If you've been with me since uh, day one, or if you're just tuning in and you're chiming in, guys, I hit 3,000 subscribers just before the new year, so it's a huge accomplishment for me. Uh, considering last year, I, at that same exact time, I was at like 500. So I put in a lot of hard work last year. Um, I, I worked diligently at trying to improve myself, uh, whether it be production-wise and uh, camera, lighting, sound, all these kinds of things. But also the content and being able to create something that I was having fun and enjoying. I'm enjoying it more than ever. And I've hit 3,000 subs in just over a year so. Thank you so much. Um, I know that, uh, you know, some channels, they, they explode and they hit hundreds of thousands and millions of views and things like that. And yeah, that'd be great. I'd love that. Um, and you never know what will happen. But right now, this is where I sit. I sit at 3,000 and it's because of you, because of the community that watches me, that supports me. So thank you so much, guys. I really can't say enough how much that means to me to be able to create a show. Um, you know, if you do know me or if you don't, uh, I let you know that I'm an actor, and so it's a long, uh, uh, hard road as as you try to uh, basically knock on doors, audition, go through all the training, do a lot of things until somebody picks you. But here at YouTube, you're able to create your own content, and that's when I um, what that's when I decided to start this channel. So um, I was really excited that uh, the channel is growing. I actually have subscribers. People are watching. Um, and uh, yeah, really just thank you so much. So we're going to wear the 3000 hat throughout the show. I hope that uh, you can somehow chime in. Leave me a comment below. Tell me which one is your favorite video. Tell me uh, what's your most um, exciting part of Travel Man Dan. And uh, what you'd like to see in the upcoming year. So thank you so much one more time. Let's get into today's show. So 
I told you a little bit about what the show is about. Now I want to talk to you about what we're going to be, uh, well, reviewing. So today, since I'll give you a little history and a little backstory, since Travel Man Dan was created over in Iceland, I was basically, if you don't know this story, I was working on a show called Klin Lin Shot. It's a, it's a Chinese television show about aliens and stuff like that. And I play the commander on the ship, Captain David Johnson. And, um, and basically, I was over in Reykjavik, Iceland, filming. I'd been there maybe two days or whatnot, and then all of a sudden, uh, something came up. They called me on the phone. They said, hey, Danny, uh, we're not going to be filming your part for four days. So then I was like, oh, okay, well, um, I guess uh, what do I do by myself? And that's right then, right there, I decided enough is enough because I've always wanted to do this, I've always wanted to try it. I was a bit snobby, um, a bit, uh, well, I, probably my ego and a little bit nervous with starting YouTube, but that was the point where I started my YouTube channel. I said, you know what? I'm gonna go outside in the patio, I'm gonna prop my iPhone, okay? I prop my iPhone up on the little uh, like railing right there. I had the mountain in the back and I started Travel Man Dan. That was it. That was right there in Reykjavik, um, Iceland. I started it, I had the travel vibes, I had the acting vibes and um, so, uh, yeah, whenever you start your journey, I'm sure there's gonna be a similar story but that's when I started mine. So, in honor of the 3,000 subscribers, I picked up this one today. We are going to do Eisenstock, okay? And I believe this is Lager, the Icelandic Arctic Pal Al. And this is the beer that we're going to do uh, to start off the show in commemoration to what I have done thus far in creating this channel. And, well, we got some new things coming up for the new year, but let's go ahead and try this one out. Like I said, this is a Icelandic Arctic Pal Al. Okay, it is written in a lot of Icelandic. If you look at it, it's 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 written in some Icelandic language, and well, I don't speak that. Um, it is uh, 60 miles south of the Arctic Circle. Okay, that's where it's brewed. So, pretty cold stuff. Now, it's five percent, five point six percent alcohol. So. It's just about, I'd say, um, I'm actually going to switch. Before, I think I was saying a strong beer was about 6%. But actually, I'm going to go ahead and say anything over 5.5% alcohol tends to be a strong beer. So this is it, the Eisenstock Lagret, or Olgret. Um, it is brewed 60 miles south of... Um, of the Arctic Circle. And I guess it's uh, Eisenstock Oglin. I think that's the name of the town. So Let's go. We I only found it in a can, but um, cool Viking. All right, very cool Viking. Let's go ahead and crack that baby open in the can. Give it. Ooh, man, that's a good smell right there. That right there, that smells like a beer. I wish you could smell it, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and try it out. Let's see what it tastes like. Ooh, ooh, that's cold. All right, right away, it's got a crisp, clean, refreshing ale taste to it. Not too sweet, not too hoppy, just right. Really good sip here on this uh, Arctic Al. And, um, ooh, it leaves a nice little backwash. Feeling good, tasting really nice. And uh, looking forward to drinking this one. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and set that over here on the bar. And uh, let's get into the show a little bit more. So... Without further ado, I'd like to bring up, uh, well, how do I say this? Because I'm really still quite bummed. Um, love my life. I'm healthy. I'm happy. I got an amazing family. Got a great group of friends. But uh, if there's one thing that I absolutely love is uh, Buffalo sports. You uh, tuned in last night to the first game of 2020, the playoff game, was the Buffalo Bills against the Houston Texans. And unfortunately... We did not win. Nope, that's right, we lost. You know, I've had about 24 hours to reflect back on it, and I was heartbroken. I still am. I just really liked this team. I liked them for, I like it because we've been bad for so long. 
okay? We've been, you know, just haven't really been good at all. And we can start to see that culture change. And when your team does good, and then they were up 16 nothing, 16 nothing. We had them on the Texas. We had them on the ropes. We had them on the ropes. And then, um, man, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to pinpoint it on anybody. Um, you know, you could say it's the coaching, it's Josh Allen, and they didn't do this, they didn't do that. There's a million things that go wrong. I'm not a professional football player. I played at a high level in baseball, and I know what it takes to win because I won a national championship, but that's a whole nother level. I'm not going to get into it. Me as a fan, I will always love the Buffalo Bills, um, no matter what. I just, man, I was just so disappointed that they couldn't pull that one off. And um, they played really well. Like, Josh Allen is in his second year. He's got a lot of growth. Devin Singletary, that's, you know, Devin Singletary is the one reason I just really don't understand why they didn't run him more, you know. But, you know what, bottom line is this. Win, lose, or draw, I will always stand behind the Buffalo Bills. I went through four losing Super Bowls in the 90s. Um, I've rooted for them for 20 years when they are bad. Supported them. Argued with people. Always get into confrontations with people about you know how much uh, I care for them. The Bills fan base, the real fan base, not the fan base. Hey, they won. You know they're on a roll. See what happens is this weird thing happens in sports, like um, especially living here in Los Angeles because it's a conglomerate of transplants and people from all over from different cities. But every year the sports team that um, never really did good. Uh, all of a sudden they did do good or they win the championship, you'll see all kinds of shit popping up. You'll see all kinds of people wearing, you know, when the Red Sox did it, you were seeing more Red Sox fans and, and Boston hats. Then when they it happened this back, please, please, please. And the St. Louis Blues had won a championship. You'll, you'll just see this kind of thing. Had the Bills won and then they moved on and then they won the Super Bowl, all of a sudden you'll see all kinds of people claiming they're Bills fans. And, you know, I've, I've lived in Buffalo and, you know, I grew up there, this and that. But they never supported the Bills when they were down, okay? And that's what I'm say, trying to say is that's when we need you the most. That's when um, my opinion is that the fans that are like bandweather, a bandwagon guys, we don't need you. Okay, just stay on the sidelines, okay? You can say you're from Buffalo, but when we win our championship, we have our day, we'll know who's true. And this guy right here, I, I consider myself a, a diehard Bills fan, uh, Bills Mafia, all that good stuff. You know, definitely going to support him. It sucks. Nobody feels worse than, than me, I think, and, and I guess we'll probably the players. And I'm really sad they lost, but... That's the game. That's the game, and that's why I love it, because when you when you win, it's going to feel victorious. And, well, I just want to say that this season was awesome. I met a great group of guys last year here in Los Angeles that support the Bills, that are real Bills fans, um, and we were able to reconnect this year, and really each and every session, each and every game was a lot of fun. I went through thousands of texts throughout the week talking about injuries, who's going to sit, the Duke. All right, I'm happy to see the Duke out there. All in all, it was a wonderful season, and that's what I'm talking about. I'm thankful for that. We're going to get better. We're going to come out next year. We're going to have a nice draft, a really good offseason. And, well, <clears throat> I guess this one is for you, Buffalo. Thank you so much for the great season. It sucks that we lost. I feel terrible. You can pin it on whoever you want, but... um. You know, that's sports. And, uh, well, uh, I just want to say thanks again for this great season. And this tip's for you guys. Wow. All right. Well, this Pal Al is absolutely delicious. I, I've never heard of it. Um, it's got a nice, uh, crisp taste to it. That, that's, what I, that's the one thing I noticed about it. It's not overly hoppy either. It's got a nice hop taste to it. Sometimes the IPAs can really sting you if, you don't, if you're not into that hoppy taste, but, but really good taste. Drank awesome, smooth, refreshing taste, and um, yeah, very happy with it. So let's get into the next thing that I want to talk about. We talked about the 3,000 subs. 
Woo -hoo. We talked about the Buffalo Bills. Love you guys no matter what. Um, I don't know if you guys have uh, checked out my merchandise or not, but I'll go ahead and put it down in the description. It's, uh, it's through a link that you just click on in the description below. You can go over and you can order Travel Man Dan shirts hoodies you can order socks and you can order coffee mugs so please if you guys uh, are interested in supporting me as a youtuber as a you know a host or whatever you can go in and start supporting my gear and i'd appreciate that but please if you do make sure that you go ahead and, and take a picture and send it to me send it to my dms either uh i don't know instagram at travel man dan or send it to me somehow some way so that i can shout shout it out back to you and say thank you because Without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. I love my community. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate every view, comment, like, share, all that good stuff. It's the, it means the world to me. And if you go ahead and you purchase merchandise, make sure that I know about it because I'll be there to uh, thank you. And hell, if you live in L.A., who knows what will happen. Maybe I'll come in and visit you and give you a big hug. So it means a lot to me. And uh, thank you. All right, what's going on here with our light situation? The bar is getting a little screwy here. All right. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about, we, we went into the Happy New Year. Let's talk about last week's video. Last week's video was, well, this is how I do it every year. Every, I mean, every six months and then every new year, I put out the compilation videos. And if you haven't seen it, make sure you check out last week's Wednesday 2020 compilation it's awesome. It's all the little clips that I make for all the mic. It's called micro content that I put out on other social medias like like LinkedIn or Instagram or just shorter platforms that only use one minute, right? So, if you haven't seen that compilation video, what that is is all of them mashed together. And so, if you want to watch each and every episode that I made for the last six months in a shorter period. You can go ahead and check out that compilation video. There's lots of fun stuff in there, like when I was uh, over in Denmark and Latvia and Lithuania, and then all the cool stuff that I did surrounding here in California and even Las Vegas. But that compilation video is a lot of fun, and you'll be able to to watch it and, and watch each and every episode that I've done thus far. So check that out if you want to. That came out last Wednesday, so I appreciate that. And then really. If you could do me, this is a call to action. If you could do me a solid, take the compilation videos and, and share them on your socials. Whether it's Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Snappy Chat, Tic Tac, whatever you uh, use, please go ahead and put that on your socials and pass that compilation out so that people can kind of get an idea. It's kind of almost like a super long sizzle reel or you know, let's take a look at this guy and what he's been doing for the last year and five months and whatever and let's check it out right here in the compilation video now let's get back into the viking definitely feels a little strong like i said it's a 5.6 i've had a half a can i could feel my energy level raised i could feel um, excitement that i'm here with you guys but i also start to feel that little cheeky feeling when you're starting to get a little buzzed ah you know what i like about this beer as you're drinking it, it's got a delightful aroma of nice, uh, hoppy, not, nothing too overpowering, but it's just got a really nice uh, smell to it. And as you're drinking it, it's not something that like really takes you over the top and stings you and puckers up that, that side cheek when you, you know, when you drink that really hoppy stuff. Um, yeah, so this is, this is really kind of a, a nice mix between a little bit stronger of a lager and a little bit less strong of an IPA. So really nice choice. We're going to get back into it. We're almost done with it. Now I want to get into last week's Food Friday video. So like I said, each each uh, benchmark of six months and then here I go ahead and post everything. So last week's Food Friday was a Food Friday 2020 compilation. All the great foods that I enjoyed over the last six months are all squeezed into one video. So if you want to go ahead and check out all the cool stuff that I ate, make sure you go check that video out. That came out last Friday. As most of my videos come out every Wednesday, 
Friday and then live here with you like now on Sundays. So please check out the food compilation. You'll see all the delicious foods I ate in Europe and all the giant sub that I ate here in Los Angeles. Oh, and the really delicious omelet at Eaton Park in Burbank. The best omelet in Burbank, baby. And it holds true because that thing was amazing. The staff was excellent. And one of my favorite all-time restaurants here in Los Angeles, California, down in Hollywood on Gowler and Hollywood Boulevard is El Wazir Chicken. Awesome. Thank you so much. Check out the Food Friday compilation. You're going to love it. And you're going to get inspired. You might say, you know what? I'm going to LA. I want to find out some cool places to eat. Let me check out some of this compilation video and then I'll get some ideas. Eh, I don't know that, that one. I don't know about it. But, eh, that one. Eh. Ooh, that one I got to try. That kind of stuff. So, and once again, if you could do me a solid, go ahead and pass that along. Share it. Put it on any one of your socials, like I said before, and I would really appreciate that. I'll shout you out. So thank you so much. But check out those uh, the compilations for Wednesday of all the Travel Man Dan and the Friday. That will be really good. So, all right. Let's see. Where are we at now? Okay, so now I want to talk about the Happy New Year, right? We've entered a new decade. It's 2020, baby. Um, yeah, it's exciting. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, I wish you all the best in health and happiness. Those are the two most important things, no matter what you do. Like, health is number one, and being happy is number two. So, you know, um, I just wish you a lot of good time. Now, I put on a little video really quick on Escondido Falls. It was just a quick little, me and my buddy went there hiking. We had some friends from overseas come and visit us, and it's a really cool place up PCH, if you know Los Angeles. Um, if you if you don't, um, you can check it actually out one of my food videos where I went to Malibu Seafood Company. It's about two or three miles past that, just before Paradise Cove. You got to be really careful when you're parking, but you can park on the side of the road and then you kind of walk through this like paved road through these really expensive houses. I'm, I'm talking like 40, 50 million dollar homes, like gorgeous, absolutely stunning things like who the hell lives there kind of thing. And then you get into like this little trail and you come to this like uh, pond, puddle, rocks, there's people out there and a waterfall. But then you can go ahead and you can climb up higher. You come to actually some steep parts. So my recommendation is make sure you got the proper gear, like jeans and, and or some kind of durable pants um, in case you take a little slide because the rocks are really jaggedy. And then make sure you're wearing the proper boots. But then you come to like a, a rope and you're pulling yourself up. And if you get to that second level, you're going to see an amazing waterfall with a little pond right there. And I put on a little video commemorating the Happy New Year. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you check out that one. That one's really fun. And then, which brings me to the next fun New Year's Eve party kind of video that I want to put out. And this one, I tell you what, this one, this one really, really excites me. Uh, when, I, when I watched it and um, it was sent to me by my friends, it almost brought me to tears because it, it just, it really means that dear to me. And it's, um, it's so close to my heart. Um, if you don't know, and I'll let you in a little bit of my personal life is obviously I love entertainment. I love performing. I love I love this, whatever this is, whatever you want to call it today. I have no idea. Um, you know, trained as an actor, work on YouTube, all this kind of stuff. I love to, be, to, to go out there and perform as an artist or as a performer. And every year I go home for Christmas to Buffalo, New York, and then I usually stay for New Year's, and we go to a place called Allegheny State Park. One of my first videos of me sledding. And if you haven't seen it, I'll go ahead and toss it up there right now. But that was a really fun thing. And why it's fun is because I'm able to go out there with my brother, all his group of friends, and just a, a great group of people that we go out there and we celebrate uh, the new year. Okay, I'm not into the whole crowds and being out in public and, and all, you know, uh, downtown kind of crazy stuff. I think it's amateur night. Um, I just don't like being out. So we go to the woods. Well, this year I wasn't able to do it uh, due to, to some work obligations. I was uh, I was restricted and I had to come back to California. And well, they all still went. Matter of fact, they went big time this time. We went to 18 cabins with about 85 people, and uh, it was really exciting. It was a lot of fun. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this video up tonight to show you. Um, 
a little bit about it. And what it was is I've, I've grown to, uh, you know, build this bond with my friends and people that we go camping with, and especially their kids, their children. And, uh, man, what, what, how, how else, I don't know how else to say it, but basically they sent me a video, and you'll see it, I'll go ahead and post it, of um, their celebration, uh, their rendition, their um, imitation, if you will, their travel man dan video all right it was uh four girls and then they get a couple other boys i'd grown that and i've made videos with them throughout the years every year we go camping we make like quick little short videos and i'll actually go ahead and post the original video that we did we did one of those freeze flash mob things and you'll go out to see it but to be able to impact children to be able to have this uh uh i don't know i guess persona to them that they they, they watch and, and they, they were inspired to go and make this video i mean i i just don't it was probably the the happiest time i've ever been watching a video on social media and it just really i can't say enough i'll go ahead and post it thank you so much guys i absolutely love you you know who i'm talking to if you see this video i love you guys um you know, you, you are wonderful families. I look forward to coming out there. Hopefully, I'll be able to stay for next year, and we'll make a really cool, fun one. But I'll go ahead and post that, and you can check it out. And, uh, yeah, tell me what you think in the comments below. But that was really cool, really special. And the great thing about video and YouTube and stuff is it's forever. So even 10, 15, 20, 25 years from now, we'll be able to look back on that and, and, and smile. So you'll be able to check that video out. And, uh well, let's go ahead and finish it, and then I'll give this a grade. All right, this is the Einstock Glacier Iceland Arctic Pal Al. Ah, so good. I even drank the foam. Wow, really delicious. Wow. One more look at this. Take a look, guys. If you get a chance to check it out, I got this particular beer at Ralph's. Okay, if you don't know Ralph's, it's a supermarket in California, specifically Los Angeles. I'm not sure if they're in Northern California. I think they're statewide, but really good stuff. I mean, like I said, cool, refreshing, smooth, uh, nice taste, not overwhelming, really, really solid pal Al. Really liked it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it... <laughs> I'm going to give it a pretty high score because it's delicious. When I drink it again, yes. How many can I drink? I don't know. I'm probably six pack. And you're feeling pretty good. Definitely feels strong. That's why I'm going to land this right here. If you get a chance to drink the Einstock, I'm going to give you an eight. That's right. A solid eight. Really, really respectable. And uh, enjoy it. The Vikings are playing right now against the Saints. And, uh, well, good luck to that because that beer is gone. Now... Let's go ahead and let's get into the next beer. And if you know anything about Los Angeles, if you know anything about uh, San Diego, I'm not sure about uh, you know uh, the Texas and Arizona, but one thing that has crossed over a uh, because they are on the border, it is the Mexican beers and do 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 All right, okay. The you know, interesting man in the world type thing. We are trying out the second beer is Dos Equis. Um, XX Lager Especion and uh, if there's ever a, a, a commercial job or like a, a, a persona I always wanted to be the Marlboro man I don't know why I just always wanted to do that maybe because I grew up my father smokes Marlboros but um but I guess next in line would be the most interesting man in the world and the Dos Equis. Um, you've seen the commercials. The guy's a stud. Um, well, I think they got a new guy now, but uh, I'm talking about the original guy. We're going to try out the Dos Equis Cerveza. Okay. It is, um, well, it is a lager especial. So it's a special lager. And uh, we'll see. I don't know the alcohol percentage on this one. But let's take a look and see if I can find it. It's probably pretty low. Considering being a lager, um, like you said, I, I don't really go into full depth of a beer connoisseur. I grab a couple beers. I'm interested in reviewing them. If you know of any, put it down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from them. I'll definitely try it, and I'd go ahead and make the show. So let's go ahead. It is a twisty. 
Is it? No, this is not a twisty. Okay, so what do we get when it's not a twisty? It is the red bottle opener. Okay, pretty cool. We'll go ahead and pop that sucker off. All right, right away. I've always been suspect about the green bottles, and if you watch the show, you know we talked about it before, whether or not the light refraction going through the green bottle kind of skunks it. So let's go ahead and take a sniff. Mm, doesn't smell like anything. Probably just your decent regular beer let's go ahead and take take a take let's go ahead and take a taste I don't always drink beer but when I do I drink Dos Equis <laughs> I think the Iceland beer's got me all whacked up all right pretty good pretty good stuff right there first swing you know it's got your um your familiarity with a lager taste, really refreshing beer, good good swallow, uh, you know, nothing too overpowering, no uh, strong hoppy taste, no amber taste, just a regular basic clean amber. All right, so now let's get into something that I want to bring up and 2020, right? We already talked about the new year. But this next segment I want to talk about real quick with you is about change. And I'm making some changes with Travel Man Dan. Okay? I've told you before, when the, oh, I've told you before, videos come out every Wednesday and Friday and then live here on Sundays. But in order to, well, dive more into content, uh, understand a better production, just, just have more fun with it without just trying to like spit out videos because I'm still a one man team. Um, and that brings me to a real quick point. If you're ever interested in editing, uh, pointing at a camera and, and, and coming along, please, and you live in the Los Angeles area, I'm always looking for people. You know, I'm a real stickler on time and, and reliability. So if you're not that guy, don't call me. Or girl, don't call me. But if you're interested and you want to help a channel grow, hit me up. I'm definitely looking to grow a team this year. I'm looking for good, solid people as I grow, as I increase uh, revenue, production, all this kind of thing. Uh, maybe it could be you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch things up a little bit. And um, you're still going to give you a lot of cool videos and great content. You're still going to get two videos a week. The only thing is I I'm going to do it like this. So there's going to be a Wednesday video coming out this upcoming Wednesday. Then there'll be the live Sunday. So we're not doing Food Friday. We're not doing fr Food Friday until the following Friday. Okay, then we're gonna land on that Food Friday. Then we're gonna do a Sunday live video. And then we're gonna go back around again and then Wednesday. So essentially, there's going to be two weekly Wednesday Travel Man Dan videos a month, two weekly Food Friday videos a month, and then four live videos every Sunday. Now I'll go ahead and throw in some live videos here and there if I do something really cool. There's no need to kind of hold back. I might just put something out. You might just get a random thing. That's why it's important to click on the notifications. But the schedule for this year will be two weekly Wednesdays every other week and then two food Fridays every other week and then we're really gonna dive into this live show because as I start to develop I really want to work on a live travel show if you will and you'll see what's coming it's definitely gonna be fun it's definitely gonna be exciting I'm gonna stick to being me and don't worry videos are gonna be coming but they're just not gonna be coming out every uh, Wednesday Friday Sunday Wednesday Friday Sunday it's just a lot of work as a one-man team and well Truth be told, I, I, I just I want to scale back a little bit and understand the process more. So we're just going to do it like this. And then we'll reevaluate everything uh, every six months and every year. So if it's not working, if it's different, if it was better before, we'll reevaluate it, right? This is my channel. This is my show. I'm the producer. I'm the director. I'm the star. And that's what I like about it. So if you don't see a weekly Wednesday video every week, don't panic. It's every other week, and same thing with Food Friday. But you'll be able to chime in at all these live weekly beer and video review shows with Travel Man Dan every Sunday. So that, I just wanted to let you know, and that's going to bring us right up to the topic of what's coming out this week. Let me go ahead and swig out the old Dos Equis. Oh, that's good. Now, this is, this is a beer that I can hang with for about at least a 12-pack. You know, it's uh, it, it's light, it's crisp, it's um, it's uh, not overpowering. 
We got a little text message. Who is it from? All right. Uh oh. We got Burger Boy. You may have seen Burger Boy and Nate Messick before in some of my other videos, like Utah camping. He did the one with uh, with me driving um, the go kart. And so, well, that's uh, that was his text. He's nervous. The Eagles about to go on, and uh, well, the Bills aren't in it anymore. So, if anything, I'd like to see the Eagles win because um, he. I, I, I want to see my best boys fucking, ex, oh, excuse me. I want to see my best boys excitement and uh, I want to see the Eagles win for him. So, you know, that was him. But, but we're getting into the seconds and this is what I was saying before is this week's upcoming video. Whoo, man, this one was fun. Uh, uh. Now, it's weird because I'm always on the fence about I'll go out and film something and it will be like an hour long long format and then i'm stuck with this decision do i divide it in half and give you two episodes or do i just put it out there and give you one full episode and that's eventually that's well that's realistically what created food friday as i I was going out and traveling and stuff, and I was doing, like, uh, I think I was doing Griffith Park, and then I was doing some restaurants and stuff, and I was coming up after editing it, and I was having, like, an hour-long episodes. And I says to myself, who are you? You're nobody right now. Nobody's going to watch you for 45 minutes. Um, so, you know, what I did is that's when I created two different shows. I created the Weekly Wednesday and the Food Friday all on Travel Man Dan, which then brings me to this week. Oh, we got a phone call. We got a phone call right now. Hey, that's always the fun of going live. So that's what brings me to this week. All right. So what I want to talk about is, well, the ability to, to know when to split a video. So this upcoming week is a really fun video of this art gallery that I went to called the Art Gallery 800. Wow, what a cool place. And what it is, is it's a place in North Hollywood, and you'll be able to check it out. And it's it's made by the union of uh, artists and, and set directors and painters. It's the 800 union, okay? That's why it's called Gallery 800. And each one of these people, yeah, you have to have your... See, the thing is about Hollywood is you have to have your day job, and you have to have your creative out, um, uh, uh, <laughs> outlets, I guess you will. So... Oh, I got to answer the text one minute, guys. Um, let me just text back. Okay, sorry about that. So what I was saying is, so that Gallery 800 is a really cool video because you're able to um, to go and see these people that w work and create movie sets, right? They go and they paint uh, walls and they make like uh, p places look like a prison set and they play make places look like a sci-fi thing or whatever. I don't know, whatever movies you can see. And then they have the art gallery where on their time off, they create their own art and... Man, you're going to see some freaking amazing art. And um, and this is where I split it into two, which brings me back to what I was saying. So next week, or this week, is going to be just the gallery. Then the following week, well, the week after, you're going to see an amazing artist. A guy that I love his artwork. I've talked about him before. His name is Pete Von Schally. He makes some amazing, cool storyboards. He's a monster artist. And I interview him and I talk with him about all the cool stuff that he does. And um, just really fun, really fun episodes coming up this month in January. So stay tuned. Next week's episode will be the Gallery 800. It'll give you something really cool to go and see. And um, I'll give you a little tip if you go ahead and see the gallery. Because the gallery is small. It's not like you're going to a major museum. But there's a lot of cool, fun things just right there. It's considered the, the NoHo North Hollywood Arts District. But you can go and check out the gallery. Next door, you can pop over to a video cave, uh, a barcade, like a video game arcade where you can drink beers and stuff like that. Then you can go next door where you can go to this like 50s diner kind of food place. So you can really just stay on this small little strip and have a hell of a time. Have a great like night, afternoon. But um, 
stay tuned. That's coming up soon. Next, uh, this Wednesday, the uh, Gallery 800. Now let's get into this uh, this beer. Damn. Delicious. This reminds me of just hanging out, chilling with the guys, having some girls, just sitting on the beach, drinking beers. You know, easy, uh, light, not bad, um, not a sour taste. So it passes the green light inspection. It's just an overall, just a really cool beer. So those Secchi's, you're doing well. I'm definitely enjoying it. Now let's move on to the next thing. And this is a little segment I like to call, what are you reading? What are you watching? What am I reading? All right. What am I reading is this, okay? I was traveling a lot, but I'm reading this magazine. If you check this out, it came in the LA uh, newspaper a couple weeks ago. It is the 101 best restaurants in LA. Check it out. It is written by the Los Angeles Times. And each one is really cool. They give a lot of descriptions. They talk about, uh, you know, a little bit about restaurants. Uh, they give you a kind of, look at this place, Matzaplex, okay? Try that pizza pie. And they just basically talk a little bit about it. And I'm using it for uh, ideas and developments of where I want to go and see. Because this upcoming year, I'm really going to focus on Los Angeles um, and, and basically the western part of the United States. So I want to hit places like Seattle and Portland and Arizona and more of Nevada. And I just really want to focus a lot on Los Angeles. So this is what I'm reading up on. Now these places, some of them are really swanky. Some of them are really fancy. Some of them, I don't know how they feel about a vlogger just coming in there and talking to them and you know, reviewing their food. But um, hey, it's free marketing for them, so they'd be foolish not to. You never know when Travel Man Dan's gonna go from 3,000 to 30,000 to 300,000 to 3 million. <laughs> Can you imagine? But, um, but uh, yeah, so there's a lot of good places. This is what I'm reading. Um, like, uh, yeah, just really cool stuff. A lot of places that I never knew about in Los Angeles. I know that it's a huge city. I know that it's a culinary mecca for a lot of things. And, uh, well, I'm excited to read this. So uh, let me know if you're reading this. Let me know if you uh, have any places or ideas for Food Friday here in, in, in Los Angeles or wherever in the world. I've, uh, you know, I always take notes. So if you always slide in a comment, trust me, I will read it. I will answer back and I will take note of it. So let me know but that's uh that's what i'm reading and also let me know what you're reading you know and what i mean by reading is like obviously people don't really necessarily uh, some people maybe read 400 page novels overnight but but even if you're just reading something just let me know and uh maybe we can connect on an intellectual level if i've read it before or you know just uh maybe you can spark some interest or make a recommendation i'd love to hear from you so put it down in the comments below what you're reading what are you watching? Okay. What are you watching is another little segment. And let me know down in the comments below what you're watching. I'm watching. Well, I'm about to start watching this thing called The Aeronauts. I don't know too much about it. It was suggested to me. It was recommended to me. It's about uh, some uh, uh, flight uh, people that um, go ahead and they basically, they're inventing new ways to fly, I think. I'm, I, I don't know too much about it. So that's what I'm about to watch. I know Eddie Redmond's in it. I know it should be pretty good. I'm going to check it out. Let me know in the comments below what you're watching. I'd love to hear from you. Let's go back to this Dos Equis. I'm going to take a healthy pull, give you the quote of the week, and then, well, we're going to kick it, and we're going to get out of here. Ah, it's good. See, that's the thing about the Dos Equis that I like. Even the Icelandic beer... Definitely not the double IPAs. You can't just like slug them down. You can't just whack them down because yeah, they're just really heavy and well, it might be disruptive halfway through your slurp. But something like this, nice Dos Equis lager, really delicious. Um, it, it's uh, it's easy. It's uh, it's a nice tasting beer. And uh, well, let me finish it and uh, then let's get into the quote of the week. Uh, delicious. Hey, Dos Equis, if you need the most interesting man in the world, like a real guy, not just a freaking actor, hit me up. 
I'd love to do a commercial with you. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm too young. Maybe I don't have a beard. But uh, yeah, good stuff. Dos Equis, overall rates just across the board. Better than average. Nice lager. Easy drinking. Backyard sipping. Beach relaxing beer. So if you want to check it out, I definitely suggest it. I'll probably drink some more of it later. Absolutely delicious. Enjoyed it very much. That's why I'm also going to give it a score of 8. That's right. Dos Equis gets an 8. Okay, so all to my Mexican friends. Dos Equis, hell of a good product. It's delicious. I encourage you to drink it. Of course, if you're in America, make sure you're of age. And, uh, well, a lot of fun. Now, let's close out the segment with, um, well, we already talked about the Bills, but if you haven't noticed, it's Sabres season. All right, so uh, tune into the Buffalo Sabres because they might surprise you. Jack Eichel is probably the best player in the NHL this year. He's kicking butt. Um, we're down Skinner and Olsen for a little bit, but the Sabres are hanging on tight, and well, the Bills are done, so now it's time to direct our focus on the Buffalo Sabres. So, hey, shouts out to Buffalo Sabres. Yeah, love you guys too. Now I want to go into the quote of the week. And, well, I didn't know what to say or how to say it. I didn't look up anything. So I wanted to go with the new year. I wanted to go with the first live uh, show of the new year with my quote, my mantra, my motto, the thing that I always tell myself, whether you believe it or not, I don't care. This is amongst me. And here's what I always say. Believe in yourself, work hard, and don't give up. It's real simple, okay? It's, um, it's some basic principles, but it's so true, okay? Believe in yourself, work hard, and don't give up. These are really, really basic things, and I know, you know, this is not like uh, some Greek mythology kind of overlay, amazing quote and stuff. That quote was made by me, Danny Soleil. It's been said over and over, but this is something that I always tell myself, and I break it down sentence by sentence if you will i don't even know if that's a sentence but here we go believe in yourself guys believe in yourself whatever you do whether you're on youtube whether you're an actor whether you're an artist whether you're an insurance salesman whether you're a landscape developer whether you're working as a cook whether you're working at uh, some odd job that you don't really want to be in but you have thoughts and you have uh, creative endeavors that you want to explore Believe in yourself, guys. Really believe in yourself. Because here's the thing. Nobody believes in you as much as you do. Okay? And that's very, very important to understand. Because you're going to find out if it's something creative, if it's something that um, that you're uh, chasing after or something like that. Nobody ever believes you. Because they always they have something directly to already look at. The superstars that are already out there, the people that are already on TV, the musicians that are already doing their thing, the painters, the artists and stuff. So nobody wants to hear it from you until you've actually made it. So you have to have that blind faith, that belief that you can do it. Now, and if you're talking about like an ordinary uh, like life, and I use that word directly but indirectly, I'm not, I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody, but let's say you believe that your pizza is the best pizza in the world. Okay, believe in you because there's always going to be other people that sign on to the pizza that's already being made, that's already out there, that's been with them for 20 years. So they don't necessarily believe in you because the other pizza they believe in, they know it's already successful. So this is an important thing. Believe in yourself. You can do it. You can achieve it. We're all we're all in this shit together. Okay. You can whatever you want to do, whatever you want to be. If you want to be an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, if you want to live a simpler life, and you want to be a construction worker, or you want to be uh, somebody that just basically works on a garbage truck. Nothing wrong with that. No shame in that. But believe in yourself that you can do it. That you can wake up and you're able to do it because. Uh, you know, some some people have envy over that, but you just never know, okay, how much that self-belief will drive you to the next level, okay? Whether that be financially, emotionally, physically, just believe in yourself, guys. That's number one. Number two, it's a very simple, basic principle that my parents taught me, and uh, that's work hard, you know? Nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody is going to do it for you. Nobody cares, okay? Nobody cares if you... um. <clears throat> 
if you make it or not. But what they do care about is when you do make it. And that's a really strange thing, right? When you make it, for whatever reason, whatever your job is, if you become the best doctor or if you become a doctor or a dentist and stuff, then all of a sudden they're on board. But when you're going through school and stuff like that, they don't understand the hard work that you go in and you're going to practice and you're going to go on to, you know, opening people's mouths and working with those dental tools and stuff like that. And um, it takes hard work. It takes dedication. It takes loyalty to the belief that you can do it. Okay, so work hard. No matter what it is you do, just continue to work hard. You can get better and better. Don't try to fix it and change it all overnight. Just continue to work hard at it little by little and you will get there. And then lastly, and I speak to you as an artist, but I'm telling you, whatever you do, whatever it is, your profession, your life, and whatever, it applies to everything. Everything is relative. And that's this last one. Just don't give up. Don't quit. Don't give up. Just keep going. You're going to have some ups, you're going to have some downs, you're going to have some middles, okay? But if you don't give up, you're going to be in it, okay? And then you're going to learn from that. You're going to get smarter, you're going to get it better, you're going to understand things, you're going to appreciate things, you're going to be able to change things, tune things in, tune things out. And because of your diligence, because you didn't quit, you'll be able to uh, accomplish anything. And that is the quote of the week. I hope you enjoyed it. One more time, believe in yourself, work hard, don't give up. That's by me, Danny Soleil, a.k.a. Travel Man Dan. Thank you so much. I want to wish you guys all a very happy 2020 and beyond. Thank you so much for getting me to 3,000. Thanks for hanging with me on this weekly beer and video review show. And, um, yeah, just want to say, guys, have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much. It's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.